come to serve the God who gave all worlds that are and all that are to be. And you know what? It's that to be part that I really get excited for. Amen. The world that is to come. Welcome this morning to Church of the Holy Spirit. I want to say thank you for coming and joining in worship. And I want to welcome all those of you who are joining this morning at home. You are part of us. We are part of you. Thank you for being with us this morning. I want to ask you real quick, if you would, take a moment, go to the post where you found this video, click that little share button, and let's invite others to join us this morning. Thank you so much. We begin our service on page two of our bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed blessed be his kingdom, now now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, and learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now would you please be seated as we take a moment and listen to God's holy word. The first reading is from Zephaniah chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God. For the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guest. At that time, I will serve Jerusalem with lamps. I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. 
those who say in their heart, the Lord will do no good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, their homes shall be laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. The day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and a battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon the people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them that day from the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full, a terrible end he will make of the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm reading is from Psalm 90. Let us recite it together. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the lands and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back from dust and say, Go back, O children of earth. A thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them and labor pains come upon a pregnant, a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as you indeed are doing. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, and to each according to his ability. And then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forth, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went, and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. In all my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now, concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. There's a common interview question um, if you're out looking for a new job, and it goes something like this. Where do you see yourself in five years? Now, if you are the interviewee, you know that you really have to answer this question carefully. I mean, it, if you're applying for an entry-level position, sorry, there's something crawling on the altar. If you're applying for an entry-level position, you don't say, well, I want to be the CEO. Um, but at the same time, you, you don't want to answer, I just want to be mopping floors. Unless, of course, you're a janitor. But then there's a whole lot of other things that you would want to excel in. No, here's the thing. No matter how someone answered that question five years ago, they likely got it wrong. This, this has been an awful year, let's just say it. Let's just call it what it is. 2020 has been a hard, it's been one of the most uncertain and troubling years in modern history. 
<clears throat> and yet, no matter how much we want to convince ourselves otherwise, life is always uncertain. Everything about life is uncertain. I mean, there's stock markets and interest rates, oil prices, wars, the threats of war. All these affect us in ways that we often seldom realize, but we still feel deeply. We feel them in our wallets. We feel them in the unemployment line. We, we feel them in our therapist's office. We feel them in the ER when we don't know the difference between a heart attack and just mere anxiety. We take for granted our time on earth. We take for granted the lives that are closest to us. <clears throat> and then we face the specter of a deadly virus and we're reminded yet again <clears throat> that life is incredibly uncertain. And if you're anything like me, it is way too uncertain for someone that highly values security and knowing what's coming next. Well, uncertainty is nothing new in the life of a believer. It, it, we read it all over the pages of Scripture in the Gospels, throughout Acts, the Apostles' writings especially, there's this theme of, of what it means to be a child of God in the midst of everything around us seemingly spinning out of control. Now, have you ever felt like things were just too out of control for even God to handle. Now, not in your head, because we would never admit that, right? I'm saying in your gut. Have you ever felt that in your gut? How about this? How about, how about the, the sense that, you know, I know God's gotten me this far, but, you know, we're just waiting for the other shoe to fall. Or maybe you've wondered, is God really there? In the midst of all of this, is God really there? You may be feeling all of this and more today, and quite frankly, lately, I have. I mean, I struggle with that as well. What in the world is going on? And the thing is, in Thessalonica, things were in so much turmoil in their lives that they thought that they had even completely missed Christ's return. They felt that they were, to steal a phrase, left behind. Well, I don't know about you. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life where I have vigorously prayed for the Lord to return. <laughs> Now, when I was younger, it was usually right before uh, a final exam, right? Like, <laughs> and, but then the thing is, as we get older, it doesn't change. It doesn't get any better. It's just the stakes get higher and higher and higher. And if he would just return, I wouldn't have to face this test. In Thessalonica, people were dying family members were dying, and somehow the people in the church had this notion that Jesus would keep this from happening. <clears throat> Jesus said he would come back, but they expected it to happen immediately. And when he didn't, they were confused. See, because instead of promises, instead of hope, instead of the hopes that come from Christ and his word, instead of the hopes of heaven, they wanted certainty. They want a certainty. I don't want to hope. I want to know. So they ask Paul to make it clear. When is Jesus going to return? And Paul says, well, we simply do not know. Nobody knows. 
And that's not what they wanted to hear. It's hard not knowing what's around the corner. Because sometimes life comes at us so fast, we don't even have time to duck. And it makes sense. It really does make sense to desperately want something certain to cling to. And the problem is, though, is that we begin to manufacture certainty in our lives. We try to convince ourselves that things will turn out our way. A loved one will get better. We claim that new job. We know that this next attempt, whatever it is, we know that this next attempt will work. And when it doesn't happen, our faith gets shaken. And we begin to think, well, maybe God is not there. Maybe he doesn't care. Or this is the worst. Maybe I just don't deserve for things to turn out my way. And there's a method to this madness because manufacturing certainty in our lives, making up some sort of certainty helps deflect us from the reality of our lives that things feel out of control. I mean, we, we, may, be, we may be persecuted. We might be facing conflict. We might, there might be conflict in the family. Maybe we've lost a job. Maybe whatever it is. But at least I know when Jesus is going to return. And then we don't know. I mean, there simply is no biblical room for certainty when it comes to the circumstances of life. And here's the problem with certainty. Again, I get certainty because I want certainty, but the problem with certainty is that it removes the role of faith. Why do we need faith when we already know what's going to transpire? I mean, life would be a thousand times easier if everything were just black and white. I'm a black and white person. I mean, I, I just want everything cut and dry. I want everything in their boxes. It makes my life easy because I don't have to figure things out. But that's not life. A lot of things in life are gray. And here's the thing. In the face of this longing for certainty, what Paul calls them to is faith. He calls them to be faithful. He tells them to put on the breastplate. breastplate it, it, the breastplate of faith and love. It's, that's that armor. He says lean into faith as a defense for the hardships of life. Let the losses of life push, push you towards Christ and not away. That's what he's saying. He calls him to faith. And then he calls him to trust in the fact of your, of your salvation as if it's a helmet. Putting on that helmet of salvation as a defense against the muck of life, when the stuff of life comes at you fast and threatens to undo you, trust in your salvation. But then, he get, then it gets better because he says, not all things in life are uncertain. Not everything in life is uncertain. There are things that we can hold on to for sure. And the thing Paul points out is that you are Christ's and Christ is yours. He says to them and to us, you are the children of light and the children of day. He doesn't say, well, if you belong to Jesus, this might happen, you know, you throw your dice in this direction, and it, only, it might work out in your favor. No, he says you are. There is no equivocation. In the face of all their fears about this life, he reminds them of who they are in Christ. They and we are the children of God. We are the children of light. We're not lost in darkness. 
but we have the light of Christ to guide our way. And as children of the light, we eagerly await his return. This is the very thing that they were longing for. That they longed for him to come back. We too eagerly look for him to return, especially this year. <laughs> and we are loved. Here's the thing, too often we live like God is out to get us. I, I didn't look at the Old Testament and the Psalm too closely um, as I was studying this, because this has been a tremendously busy week. <clears throat> oh boy. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distression and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness. That, that's pretty dark. Um, for we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because your wrathful indignation, our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of it. Where do we go in the face? of God's wrath. It, see, here's the thing. Too often we look at that and then we, we live like God is just out to get us. <clears throat> we think that God might just, he might actually just fail us this time. And despite everything we've seen in our lives and how much we've been blessed, we're still waiting for that other shoe to fall. And God is not like that. He simply isn't like that. Because he says, <clears throat> we are destined not for wrath, but for salvation through Christ. See, that's the balm for those verses where we hear about God's pending wrath against a people who have left him, who have denied him. It's the fact that Christ came so that we do not have to face that wrath. We are not children destined for his wrath because God loves us and gave Christ. Jesus paid the ultimate price for this. He gave his life and we are destined for his salvation. The circumstances of life often, they often do not and frankly they most of the times will not turn out the way we want them to. But the fact remains, no matter how things turn out, we have nothing to fear because we are destined for life, not punishing wrath. And we're destined for abundant life. And right now, we are in the process of obtaining that life through him, and this is why we all need to continually hear the gospel. We all need to continually hear the good news of what Jesus has done on our behalf. The, the devil will constantly remind us of our failures. And if that's all we hear, then the guilt will sub subsequently carry us down and burden us for no reason. No reason at all. There's no reason for guilt. Because Christ died to spare us from God's wrath and to give us life. So we can choose to live thinking that we've missed the boat or that God is going to eventually abandon us. Or we can find rest. We can find rest in the truth that God is not angry, but is working out salvation in us. This is the certainty that he gives us in this life. This is where we hang our hats. Not on this working out, not on this working out, not on our, you know, our candidate being elected, and not on you know, this happening in our faith. No. It's the certainty of what God is doing in our hearts for eternity. That's where we hang our hat. 
Because finally, we can be certain also that Christ will return. He says, you know full well that day will come, and it will come when you least expect it. But like labor pains on a pregnant woman, they will come. There will be no escape. There is no question of his return. And what's going to happen when he comes? God fulfills his promise to come judge the earth. The earth will be purified. It will be renewed. It will become a place worthy for the glory of God to inhabit. And then we will rise in him to new life and live on this earth with him forever. That's the promise. No question. It's going to happen. Yeah, this has been a rotten year in so many ways. <clears throat> and I don't know about you, this has been a hard week. And if I am ever asked the question again in an interview, where do you see yourself in five years? My answer is going to be, well, you know, after 2020, who really knows? I might just say, I plead 2020 from here on out because we just don't know. But as Christians, despite how crazy things in this world can seem, the reality is God's purpose his purposes continue on. They are never thwarted. No matter who's calling the shots in government, in Congress, in the Supreme Court, in the White House, no matter, Jesus is always on his throne. That's not going to change. He is making his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he will always work to fulfill his promises to us through Christ. So I leave you this morning with the same exhortation that Paul gives the church in Thessalonica. As the world spins counterclockwise and completely out of control, encourage one another. Encourage one another. Lift each other up. Build each other up. Encourage each other with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remind each other daily that God is in control and nothing, nothing is going to change that as indeed you are doing. Amen. Please stand with me. We are going to take a moment and we are going to respond with a hymn Great is thy faithfulness.
as we continue in the service this morning, we confess what we believe about this great faith of ours. Using the Nicene Creed, it's on page 7 of your bulletins, page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us recite together. We believe in on God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People, Form 3, is found on page 7 of your bulletin and in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Gregory Brewer, our bishop, Father Rob, our rector, the Church of Salon, and Bishop Kanagasabi, Corpus Christi Church, Okahumpka, and Reverend Amanda Borden Kircher, Church of Our Savior, Okeechobee, and Reverend James Shevlin, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful with the word and sacraments. We pray for President Donald Trump, President-elect Joe Biden, Governor Ron DeSantis, Mayor Brian Nelson, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the par- departed eternal, give to the departed, especially Sue Mello, eternal rest, that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Our Father in heaven, we thank you first for the opportunity to come before you and lift up your name in praise and worship. Thank you for drawing each one into your presence, that we may know you more deeply, that we may hear you speak to us, and that we may lay our hearts before you. 
but I pray that you would govern um, our hearts, that you would guide our steps in the light of your Savior, and that we would follow you in all the ways that you lead. Lord, we pray for our church, we pray for our nation, we pray for those around us that you would uh, make us more like you. We pray for a church that it would grow and flourish and that your light would shine even greater and greater in the neighborhood, the city, and the world. We pray for those whom are still um, to be called into your presence. We pray for your gospel light to shine into hearts, that lives would be changed, that people would know the peace that comes from knowing the one who created them. We pray for those who are in grief, we pray for those who are recovering from sickness and from surgeries. Lord, may you also bring peace and health and a quick recovery. And Lord, may you make your gospel light shine in us that we would be more aware of the work that you are doing in us day to day. That we would not be confounded by the things of the world the things of earth that would draw us away from you, but that we, we would all, always remind ourselves and others that you are on your throne and that you are bringing your will to bear on this earth. And now, Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son, accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now... Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive your, all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Now the peace, the peace that speaks to us and tells us that he really is in control. That he really is governing this world, no matter what it looks like. The peace that knows that he has laid out promises to each and every one of us. May that peace, the peace of the Lord, be always with you. And also with you. Amen. Take a moment, share peace with each other. Remember, we're doing it uh, in a socially distanced way, but peace, guys. Um, peace, y'all. Um, turn around, say hi, wave. You can say peace to those who are at home. We're going to take a moment. We're going to wash up and get ready for Eucharist, and then I'll be right back with announcements.
Well, good morning and welcome. Uh, it is very good to be with you this morning. I'm um, in the house of the Lord. It's good to share with you in worship. Make sure I get my get everything set up up here. Um, I want to say thank you to anyone, um, all you who are visiting this morning for the very first time. Thank you for being with us. Um, it's a joy to have um, to have you all with us. And uh, and if you are online. Uh, thank you for being with us. Um, if this is the first time you've joined us on our live stream, we're, we're just pleased to have you. Uh, if you would, just drop a quick comment saying uh, where you're from and just wave. And we just want to acknowledge that uh, you joined us this morning and say thank you so much for, for being here. Um, we take a moment and we, we acknowledge birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, so is there anybody in the service this morning that has a birthday? that we can celebrate. There are two this week um, in the database that I want to point out. So if you're at home watching, uh, we're going to pray for you. Well, we're going to pray for you even if you're not watching. But um, Elaine Sinclair is a member of our church family. Her birthday is this week and also Ken Yeager. And so keep them in your thoughts. We're going to pray for them right now. Would you please join me in prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for the years um, that are represented um, in, in this congregation, and especially in those who are celebrating another year this week. Lord, we pray. We pray that um, you would bless them. We thank you for the years that have gone before that have shaped them into the children of God that they are today. We thank you for this upcoming year, and we ask that you would bless abundantly, that you would care for their needs, provide them, give them strength and joy. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, also, anniversaries. Do you have any anniversaries to pray for? Oh, <laughs> you were still praying. That's okay. You had your hands up, but I thought we prayed for that a while back. So anyhow, okay. And then travel. Um, anybody traveling? Are you guys going back this week? You're not. You are going back. Um, I want I want to pray for you if I can, um, because you're going to be driving all the way back. I know you're flying, um, so the, I want to introduce you to, you, you, most of you probably remember Frank, Frank Mello um, is Sue Mello's husband, and then um, Sonia and Frankie, um, they're here, might as well announce uh, this week, or last week, uh, Sue passed away because of her cancer, and everything's come together real quickly, but on Thursday this week at 10 a.m., at this uh, De Gespi, or De, is that right? De Gespi Funeral Home um, in, in Maitland on 1792 is going to be her, her service. We will put that out in an email. You are welcome to come to the service at 10 a.m. on Thursday. So those details will come forth. And so her family is here, but I want to pray for you guys because especially traveling right now is not great. So um, would you please join me in prayer? Lord, uh, I lift up to you the Mello family, um, and in this week of difficulty um, at the loss of um, Sue, Lord, would you give them um, peace and grace in you, that peace that goes beyond our understanding. Um, it's, it's never easy to lose someone um, that's close to you, let alone a wife and a mother. Lord, would you bless them and give them strength to bear these coming weeks and months, and I especially pray um, for uh, Frankie and Sonia as they, as they travel back, that you would give them mercies as they go, keep them safe on the road or in the air, and help them to return to their family safely. We ask this blessing in your name, the name of Christ, amen. Um, there are a couple things that I wanted to, and oh, first of all, yesterday's yard sale was huge. It went really well. It sounds like everybody was excited about it. Ladies, nods, yes, excellent. Thumbs up. Way to go. And um, you know, we had a, we had a, we had some help from uh, a lot of the folks that come on Saturdays to feed the hungry. So we had some of our local local homeless family. They came in to help set up and tear down. It was great to be with them. Really, it was. Thank you for doing that, Debbie. Um, and that was, you know, some extra labor that helped get some things done. It really went well. So thank you for all of you who have donated. 
whether it's stuff, whether it's time, whether it's prayers, thank you. Or if you came out and bought anything, <laughs> I couldn't get away without spending about 20 bucks myself. So, <clears throat> so if you contributed, thank you for that as well. Um, so then the other thing is, is our Advent countdown. If you see our table is already starting to fill up. This is a, so in all of the ways that we try to do outreach in, in Advent, most of them we can't do because of COVID this year, but this we can. So we are collecting food um, for, uh, for loaves and fishes. So, and there is a chart, there's, there's a piece of paper out in the narthex. Each day it's gonna be like, you know, Tuesday, November, whatever is peanut butter. You know, there's one day's a loaf of bread, one day's whatever. Grab one of those and if you would, if you wanna do it on a daily basis, fine. If you wanna just buy the whole list, that's fine. But come and let's load this up and let's be a blessing to those who really rely on loaves and fishes for their sustenance, especially during the Christmas season. Thank you for doing that. Um, I wanted to let you know, too, that the, the, the schedule of Christmas, Christmas is, sorry, I know it's not Thanksgiving yet, but I'm going to say it, the word Christmas. Um, it's coming. It's coming quickly. So there's a schedule of services that'll come out shortly. Those are being finalized. I do want you to know too, though, that um, this year there will be no Thanksgiving service. So for those of you who normally put that on your calendar, we're not gonna do Thanksgiving service. This year, we'll probably add it back in next year. Oh, the last thing is, um, and especially for, the, well, for those who are at home, um, at 10 a.m., following this service, we'll get everything cleaned up, set up. At 10 a.m. out front, we will be having drive-through Eucharist. Did I say 10? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's been one of those weeks. Be 11. Otherwise, Thank you. Okay. 11 a.m. Sorry. Uh, 11 a.m. We will be having drive-through Eucharist right out in front of the main sanctuary. Come in on Highland. Go out on 6th. Come in and get in the line. Stay in your cars, um, especially if you're if you're local and this is your first time. Um, tuning into our service. We would love to be able to serve you from this table. So please come at 11. And then it's at this time of the service that we would normally take up an offering, but of course we can't pass the plate or anything like that. So if you would, there's an a offering plate at the end um, of the aisle there. If you came with your tithes and offerings, um, there's a place that you can put it. If you're online, um, there are a few options. They were there during, uh, right before the announcements. I'll remind you, you can go to give.holyspiritapopka.com. You can text Holy Spirit Apopka to 73256, or you can snail mail your pledge or offering um, to the church address. Thank you for supporting your church. Thank you for supporting your ministry that goes out into the neighborhood, the city, and the world. And on that note, our offertory sentence this morning is walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Would you please stand with me? Before we begin this morning, I would like to remind us, as I do each week, that this is the Lord's table. It's not the church's table. It's not my table. This is Christ offering himself to us. It is a means of grace. You've heard the words spoken, and I hope that your hearts have been stirred. Um, I hope that it was a balm. And this comes to us in the same way, where we come and consume Christ, and we're reminded of all that he gave for us. If you are a baptized member of the body of Christ in any denomination, this is for you. Please come. And if you're, again, at home and local, we would love for you to join us at 11 a.m. for our drive through Eucharist. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms on the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you 
these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts through faith and with thanksgiving.
please stand. Our post-communion prayer is found on page 13 of your bulletin and also on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.